Hello again everybody and welcome back. Um, this is part two out of four parts in the OpenCV 2.4.11 Windows 7 installation guide. And in this part I'm going to refer to some material that was covered in part one. Uh, I suggest to view part one now if you had not had a chance to already. Uh, so diving right into it. Um, those of you that are familiar with Python will of course be aware that it is possible to have, uh, in part one here, concurrent Python 2 and 3 installs on the same Windows computer. Um, to avoid confusion for anybody that's new to Python totally or new to OpenCV totally who's watching these videos, I'm not going to do that to avoid having to introduce the additional steps. Uh, for anybody that's not familiar with that that would like to do concurrent Python 2 and 3 installs, please refer to the python.org uh, website uh, for further detail, but I'm not going to get into further detail pertaining to that here. Uh, so then continue with steps 2 and 3, uh, download OpenCV 2.4.11 and make this folder here, that's the same as in part 1, please refer to that if that's unclear. And then uh, step 4a and 4b is to download Python, and for the moment we're going to stick with Python 2. Uh, so let's see here, Python, whoops, Python, and that'll pretty much take you right to the python.org website, there you go, and then downloads, and this is what you want to get the latest. Uh, Python 2, which currently is 2.7.10. And then continuing on to, let's see, uh, well I should mention 4B. During the install, uh, there's a screen that will say Customize Python 2.7, um, and you're going to want to scroll down and choose Add Python.exe to Path, and then uh, that'll be a drop-down box, and then you'll want to choose Will be installed on your local hard drive, and this will add Python to your path. Uh, other than that, you can choose all the defaults, and then you want to reboot and make sure that c uh, colon backslash python27 backslash is in your path variable. So let's go ahead and do that here. And there it is right there c colon backslash python27. And once you verify that, you want to download the latest version of NumPy. And I should just uh, clarify uh, some people pronounce this NumPy, that's short for numbers uh, for Python or numbers in Python. And uh, some people just pronounce it NumPy because it's easier. But in any case, you want to be precise here as far as the version of NumPy that you get has to match your version of Python 2. For example, if you have Python 2.7, the Python, the NumPy for Python 2.5 or 2.6 won't work. It has to be that specific to being 2.7. So uh, once Python 2.8 comes out, for example, you want, definitely want to get NumPy for Python 2.8. If that's not out yet, stick with Python 2.7 and NumPy for Python 2.7. So let me just uh, show you their site uh, quickly so you're familiar with it. So NumPy and NumPy. And I should mention, the reason that we have to download NumPy is because in OpenCV um, 2 using Python, the OpenCV uh, image objects are stored as NumPy arrays. So to do significant manipulation, uh, reasonably complicated OpenCV programs that you may get to later on, you're definitely going to need NumPy uh, installed, so you might as well just install it now. So choose getting NumPy and then NumPy, source forge site for NumPy, and then NumPy, and you can choose the latest NumPy. And there we go, 1.9.2. And so if we mouse over here, these all three of these are NumPy 1.9.2, but the first one is for, as you can see in the mouse over there, is for Python 3.4. Then this one here is for Python 3.3. Neither of those will work. Then the third one here is for Python 2.7. That's the one you want. As, as you can see, that's the most common download. So continuing on, um, step seven, uh, if you don't want to use idle, which is the default editor that ships with Python, which it works okay, um, but it doesn't have uh, auto code completion. So uh, if you desire auto code completion, I recommend uh, PyCharm Community Edition by JetBrains, which is free and it's easy to download here. So PyCharm. And if we go here, Python Jet, uh, PyCharm JetBrains, get PyCharm now, and then this is what you'd want to download here, download community, and just follow all the defaults. It's a pretty obvious uh, intuitive installation. And here's really, this is the only step on this cheat sheet that's not relatively intuitive. What you want to do is you want to copy this file, uh, cv2.pyd, and this is, you could sort of think of this as the Python version of a DLL. And you want to copy that from C OpenCV 2411 OpenCV build Python 27 x86 and then cv2.pyd will be in there. And you want to copy that to C Python 27 lib and then site dash packages. A note that I recommend sticking with the 32-bit version of cv2.pyd that is from the x86 directory 
um, even if you're using a 64-bit computer. Uh, the 64-bit version, some concerns have been reported over time. The 32-bit version is tried and true. I definitely recommend sticking with the 32-bit version. Uh, so then the next step is for my microcontrollers and more page, decide which example you're going to use. Can you still that buy? Can you web? cam.py and redballtracker.py and in this uh, video here we'll do all three of them so let's decide what directory we're going to go into here so C and let's make these programs in Python programs and we'll just make them right there so then uh, you've probably bookmarked my site by now if not github M I C R O C O N T R O L E R S and more microcontrollers and more and it'll pop right up usually yep there you go so microcontrollers and more, repositories, OpenCV 2.4.11 installation guide, and again I recommend bookmarking this page. So we'll do control left that py to make these uh, jump out, and then we're going to download the image first, just so that's done. So then we'll choose save picture as, and you can use anything that's called image.jpg for this by the way. So let's see, Python progs, and we'll save it right there. And so now the image is there for us, and then we're going to go back to here and then candy still dot pi and then raw and then control a control c you see python code is very compact this is substantially shorter than the c plus plus code was uh, so now here we're gonna uh, click here and do new and you can choose anything that's blank like a text document and make sure to change the whole name including the file extension so you can call it anything you like we'll call it test as long as it ends in dot uh, py so let's we'll call it test dot py are you sure you want to choose uh, change the extension yes of course we do and then right click and go to open with again I prefer PyCharm you can use idle or any other Python editor that you prefer and PyCharm will take just a moment to open here for us and this is pretty uh, PyCharm that is is a pretty large program um, it, it's necessary to have the auto code completion but uh, the weight in terms of the size of it is definitely worth it because the auto code completion really is outstanding and let's see minimize this over here so control V yeah, there we go. Okay. And so let's just take a quick look at the code here. So we import CV2, numpy as MP, and OS. And again, this is going to look very similar to part one. It's essentially just a Python translation of it. So here we're going to read in the image. And uh, we're going to check if the original image is none, print an error message to standard out. And then we'll pause so the error can see the message and then return. And uh, supposing that we get to this point, if we successfully read the image, we're going to convert uh, color from the original image to the grayscale. Then we're going to Gaussian blur, and that returns into image blurred. And then we're going to call canny on image blurred, and that's going to give us image canny. Then we're going to name our two windows, show our two windows, call wait key uh, to hold the windows open while the user is looking at them. And then uh, I found that sometimes your Python programs can hang if you don't destroy all windows uh, as you're exiting. So it's, it's always helpful here to throw this line in. So then we can go to run and run and that, and there we go. And I always like to move this over here, move to right. And just as in the first part, there's our original image and candy edge image. Click on either image and press any key and that'll make it disappear. So now this is back to my GitHub page here. So let's do the next program. So candywebcam.py and then raw. Control A, Control C, minimize, and Control A, Control V, and we'll go ahead and run that. And this should be just a webcam feed, canny edge image, as you can see, there we are. And now we'll check the third one. And I should probably mention the code quickly. Um, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail again. It's really just a straight up Python translation of um, from the first part in C++. So that hopefully will be helpful for reference uh, for some people who are new to Python possibly or OpenCV2 with Python. And let's go ahead and test out the third of the three programs. Whoops, okay, there we go. So redballtracker.py and raw and control A, control C, bring PyCharm back up, control A, control V and run and run and test and you can see the command line on the right. We're getting some good uh, tracking on our red ball. And so there we are. And that completes this video. Um, you can take a quick look at the code if you like, or of course see it on my uh, GitHub channel anytime. And that's going to conclude it for this video. So in the next video, uh, part three, we're going to get into MGOOCV, which is a essentially a huge wrapper library for .NET that allows you to call OpenCV functions within um, 
the .NET environment, so there we'll be able to have a full-on graphical interface as opposed to the command line interfaces that we've had in our program so far. So I think I'm going to stop recording now and probably jump pretty much right into the next one. Uh, see you there.